The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN TV. For more information on the X Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All hit radio. To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob Vicano. And welcome back to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide, toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. Email X-Zone at xzoneradiotv.com. On all social media networks, X-Zone Radio TV, and our main website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is Richard P. Matthews. He's the author of a new book, A Curtain Opens. He's a renowned storyteller, a student of all sacred texts, a spiritual guide to inner peace. He's even a Trekkie, a guide to enlightenment, consciousness, and an awakening planet. The name of his book is A Curtain Opens. And uh, as as we all know, Exxon Nation, millions are stirring longing and searching for the greater meaning in their lives. Now, what they seek, our guest this hour, Richard Matthew explains, is not intellectual achievement. It is a connection to the great I am at the very center of their being. This is a quote, ironically, the animals are now connected and unprotected, he said. While most humans are not, yet animals are trying to help us connect. Joining me now from New Hampshire is Richard P. Matthews. And Richard, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much, Rob. It's great to be here. It's great having you here. Tell, tell me, Richard, as a spiritual teacher, what is your reaction to Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now and a New Earth? Uh, it's rather interesting with Eckhart uh, to say that he has hit the, the mark uh, dead on uh, is an understatement. Uh, the only problem that you have uh, with Eckert is that mm-hmm. uh, he is an intellectual, and but Eckert has uh, zeroed in on exactly where we need to be, uh, which is out of our mind, out of our heads, and into our bodies, and uh, he has done this through uh, awareness. So, uh, do you think that with all the strife and all the misery and all the technological advances and the data that we are being that we were being inundated with each and every minute of our waking and non-waking lives these days, that there is hope for this, this, this planet and, and us, the people? Uh, absolutely. I think that there uh, is a great deal of hope. Uh, mankind has to wake up, mm-hmm. and uh, that's part of the process of enlightenment is to first awaken and realize that uh, what the mind is doing to you and how it is misguiding you and, and how your body is, is actually telling you what uh, to connect with. What do you think it's, happened? Uh, what do you think very happened? interesting phenomenon. What do you think happened in our lives that we, we lost this very simple message, yet so, a message that's so important? Well, well we have gone through a, a period uh, that began at the beginning of the uh, end of the, the 19th century, mm-hmm. and that was called the Age of Reason. 
and uh, we were dividing the mind and the body and elevating the mind as as, as if it was uh, the end yeah. of, of of all intelligence. And in reality, what we were actually doing is distracting ourselves from uh, what is going on inside our bodies and what is actually happening within uh, our organism and how it is related to the planet and everything else. Uh, so we have be kind of blinded ourselves in this process and uh, sent us ourselves down a false path, uh, which has not been productive. So in plain English, we're not as smart as we think we are. Well, we, we, we think we're extremely smart, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and of course we're, we've reached the maximum of our 10% uh, of intelligence, and we want to push that envelope and expand it. But what we don't realize is that the intelligence that, that actually is greater than us is within us, and we have the, ca- we have the capacity to connect with that intelligence that is within us, and uh, and to actually you know uh, relate mm-hmm. to the great I am, and listen to what the great I am has for us uh, in the process, and and like your program says, uh, you know, the whole theme of your program about taking fact and and seeing that it is fiction mm-hmm. and that the fiction is really fact, is the main point here. It's because the great I am is not fiction. The mind in what it's telling you is fiction. Yeah. All right, stand by, Richard. You and I have to take a commercial break. We'll be back in two minutes. Exxon Nation, Richard P. Matthews is our special guest. He's the author of... Be right. Do you have your pencils and paper? Okay, great. A New Curtain Opens. And uh, his website is www.revitalizingministries.com. It's Friday night. I'm sorry about that. Revitalizingministries.com. I'll be back on the other side of this break with our guest this hour, Richard P. Matthews, as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the X-Zone radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. Welcome back, everyone. Our special guest this hour is Richard P. Matthews, and he's the author of When a New Curtain Opens. It's available at, um, let me see, Kindle, uh, Amazon, and CreateSpace. It's also available on his website at www.revitalizingministries.com. 
dot com. What what started you on your quest, and uh, what was the inspiration for writing your new book? It started me. Uh, it happened many 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 years ago, mm-hmm. and uh, in making my connection with the great I am, and. Uh, I was called at that point uh, into a ministry that I really didn't want, but uh, it was one that I uh, accepted, finally accepted. But the whole the whole process of of making that connection uh, and meditating and mm-hmm. using yoga to keep my body fit uh, that connection. Uh, introduced me to uh, the great I am is within us. And from that moment on, once that occurred, and I was only 12 years old when it happened, um, my whole my whole life changed. And I began to read scriptures and, and sacred texts. And when I read them, I was able to see things in them that most people would pass over. And, uh, and in... Reading those texts, I discovered there was an underlying theme, and that underlying theme was is that the great I am is not something that is up in the clouds uh, and the image that we would call God, but it uh, the great I am is within us, and He is the essence of our being and the essence of the be- of being to er- of everything on the planet. All right. So, who is this great I am? Where does where does he come from? Is is he the God of the ancients? Is he the God of today? He is uh, the he is the source. He is the creator. And, uh, and and to use the term God, mm-hmm. and the reason uh, I have shifted to go back uh, to uh, calling it um, him the great I am, is that. We see God and, and, and use the term, and I found myself saying to people, God is not an idea, God mm-hmm. is an experience. And yet, I was surrounded by theology, I was surrounded by doctrine and dogma, I was surrounded by churches that wanted to control their, you know, and organizations that wanted to control their, uh, their, their people. Mm-hmm. But in, in the essence, they, they, they weren't touching what he actually is, and he is a real existence inside us and when you make that connection he starts to talk to you his light appears to you and 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 you feel his presence you hear him as as clearly as you hear your own voice or any voice in a dream and and he tries to lay out for you what his purpose is for your life and and you have a choice and the interesting thing is is what about free will if you if you uh, if, if there is a, a great I am telling you uh, and asking you to do something, the irony is you have a choice. You have a choice because you can either do what he asks you to do or you don't. Well, uh, as a human being, you often make that choice not to do what he's asking mm-hmm. you to do, and of course you pay the price for it. Um, but the the in the end. You're making a connection with a force that is telling you and communicating to you as clearly as he was communicating to Moses from the burning bush. And that's where the name The Great I Am comes from. In, in the bush says, Moses says to the bush, what should uh, I call you? Mm-hmm. Who do I say you are? And he answers, uh, I am Hasha, I am. Mm-hmm. Now, the word Hasha not only comes from the, the word Haya, but it tells us not only where he is and what he is, it tells us exactly where he is in our inner being, because Aya means essence of being. And, and as you listen to and read the scriptures, you constantly hear this comment uh, uh, that Moses is saying, God told me this or God told me that, and in that point, the Hebrew people, he was ready to talk to all of them, but they decided they didn't want to listen to him. It, it would assign Moses to do the job for them. But it was Moses who spoke to the burning bush. It was Moses 
who went up and received the Ten Commandments. If God wanted to, or the great I Am wanted to talk to people, he was given.